Hello everybody, thank you for joining Robin and I today. Today we're going to be talking about her progress as far as what has she done since our last video, cleaning up some stuff, tying up some loose ends, and then progressing forward with applying for more scholarships. So first, before we get into that discussion, I just want to take a quick moment to remind you that this hangout is being brought to you by our sponsor, ScholarshipMembershipSite.com. Okay. And with that being said, Robin, you have been doing a lot of different things, so why don't you give everybody a quick rundown of some of the things you have accomplished, as well as some of the things you have clarified, and then we'll dive in deeper to the individual scholarship you're working on. Okay. So this past week, I accomplished turning in the FAFSA, which is the Federal Application. Do you know? Okay. I probably should have had that written down. It's basically <laughs> money from the federal government. Uh, something scholarship application, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know what the other F is. Sorry. Um, but yes, the FAFSA, I completed that on Tuesday, and it was due on Saturday, March 1st. So, uh, and it, it's, it's pretty... Uh, user friendly. It walks you through all the uh, steps, and then even on the side, while you're doing the steps, it has like a a bar on the right hand side, a column that gives you little tips and answers any like question that you might have about why you're answering this specific question. Why do they need that information? So you don't even have to go find it. Like it starts popping up. It's pretty it's pretty neat in that way. Um, they can also pull your, uh, I was able to do my taxes the week before, so they were able to pull my tax information, uh, so they, they must be linked with, um, yeah, so that was easy. Um, so yeah, I was able to do it within like 45 minutes. Awesome. And I will say that you are lucky because it didn't used to be that way. FAFSA oh. didn't used to be linked, so... Just to let you know, and also it stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Oh, wow. Okay, I was totally off. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was able to do that. Um, I was able also to get clarification on the total cost of tuition, living expenses, books, and supplies for a two-year program which is $63,000. Um, so there's that. Okay. And then um, last week we were looking at three different scholarships and just based upon the date and as far as the deadline and when they were due um, one of them we won't be able to make it, and then the other one has already passed. So that leaves us with one scholarship that we're going to focus on applying for right now that you have a really, really good odds of winning. So why don't you tell them the scholarship, what scholarship it is, when it's due, how much time we have to work on it. Okay. Yes. So the scholarship that I found is called the Audi Gerstein Platelet Disorder Scholarship for undergrad and graduate students with platelet disorders. And the reason I found this, as I spoke about in the last video, is that I have an autoimmune blood disorder called immune thrombocytopenic purpura, or ITP, and basically my body destroys my platelets in my blood. Um, and your platelets are important because they help clot your blood so that you don't bleed out. So this scholarship, this $1,000 scholarship, is created in the memory of someone that passed away due to complications with this illness, um, and also somebody that was a supporter of just continued education in general. Um, so I'm going to apply for it because I was diagnosed with ITP when I was, I think, about 16 years old, and I dealt with it through high school and community college mainly, um, and have a lot of experience with treatments and uh, attending a conference and meeting other people that have this disorder. It's pretty, it's pretty rare. It's not, it's not one of the more common blood disorders, but um, yeah. So I think. 
Um, and as you'll see, based on the questions, I feel like uh, I have a lot to talk about um, with my experience. So want to give it a shot. You definitely do. And that was one of the things that's like really nice about uh, being an advisor and a coach is watching you progress, not only from your previous essay to this essay, but just watching some of the things you put down. It's like, wow, that's really powerful. Like, I know people who will really connect with that, who, who have been through similar things, or, you know, they have a similar story to tell, but they've kept it inside of themselves. So, you know, I think this exercise is great also on a personal level because now you're, you're refining your communication skills about what you went through, sharing it with other people, and that's going to help you connect with other people. But also because it's also related to your career, it's also going to help you communicate in your career, especially as you progress forward and when you want to, you know, perhaps uh, go to other organizations during the interview process you know, your communication skills will be much more refined because you're getting practice now, not only verbally talking about it on the hangout, but also in the written format by practice writing. So it's really cool. It's, it's a great honor to, to watch you progress and grow um, and have this all recorded and see how you've grown as a person. You smile a lot more. You're a lot more happy. You just uh, you have more of an inner glow about you that's coming out. So it's, it's an honor to be part of that. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then also for this uh, particular essay, it's going to be due in about a month and a half. So we have some time to work on it. But also, more importantly, you have time to contact people because there's two letters of recommendation that are required. It is interesting because um, that scholarship application doesn't want your name mentioned anywhere within the actual essay or within the letters of recommendation, which is understandable when you take it from their, their point of view. Basically what's going to happen is her name's only going to be on the application and then they're going to submit the essay and the two letters of recommendation to people and, you know, to people on the board to reduce bias as far as people they may have known that are patients who are applying, they don't have their names and they're basing it off of their uh, verbal, I'm sorry, their written communication skills, their ability to share their story, as well as the letters of recommendation. And the interesting thing is that the letters of recommendation are very vague, which vary from scholarship to scholarship. Some of them will have like specific questions they want them to answer. Others of them will be vague because I hope it will give more insight that people will be willing to share more about the candidate. And in this particular um, scholarship, I think it's great that we're working on the essay now before you approach the people that you want to write letters of recommendation because this essay is about seven to, 700 to 1,000 words and they had a paragraph of what they wanted you to talk about, but we broke it down into six questions. So your essay needs to talk about six questions and then out of those six questions, we're going to talk about which ones you feel most connected with, who you want to write your letters of recommendation, and then based upon what they've seen you go through, which you know, which one or two, maybe three essay questions you feel it is that that person could write about most. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we're going to have them, the people writing your letters of recommendation, basically provide another perspective into the same situation. So rather than just asking them, hey, can you write me a letter of recommendation for this particular uh, blood disorder scholarship, you know, you're going to give them a little bit more direction based upon what you think they'll be able to contribute. So from that standpoint, that's why I'm so excited that you went ahead and started your rough draft tonight and completed it is because, you know, there was a lot of things that I saw that it was interesting to observe, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. Um, but with that being said, there were six questions, and we didn't go in order. Um, one of the things that I had you do was I had you color code each question, and you made a nice comment about that. Um, why don't you go ahead and go ahead and share that comment with the rest with everybody else? Um, I'm thinking it just number one, it makes it fun, but also. It's something. It seems like something so simple, color coding, but it really helps uh, break down 
it doesn't seem like as as huge as it does in the beginning when I see all the questions. Um, it really helps break down the process. Is that what I said? <laughs> yeah, it's something so simple, but it can make such a huge difference. Yeah, and yeah. I agree. It it really does brighten everything up. It makes it so much more fun and like, ooh, colorful. Let me like type some more to add more color. Um, and then again, we went through the bullet point process and added bullet points with thoughts. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick screen share so it'll help give people who are visual an idea of what we're talking about. But pretty much we copied and pasted the questions, and then each question is its own color. So we can see that there's six of them, and then there's bullet points, and each bullet point expresses an idea. I, I just want to say I don't see this... I see it on my screen. Is it being shared with everyone? Yes. Okay. That's because you don't have, you probably don't have Google Drive open. So one of those things about Google Hangout and using this free technology is it can be a little complicated as far as who sees what and when. And sometimes you learn through trial and error. And I go back and I rewatch these videos to learn what I can do better or how can I improve the quality of the video? But pretty much, when I share something, it records what I'm sh what I'm uh, showing. Okay. And in order for you to be able to see the same document, you would need to go ahead and open it up in Google Drive. Okay, it is open. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and Google Drive is great. I love it because it allows us to both work on the same uh, document at the same time. So as, doc, as Robin is typing away, I can give her guidance. And if she gets stuck, I can, you know, type in a couple things, help make some comments, or help uh, rearrange things such as copying and pasting. And so one of the things that I had you do during this exercise is I had you pick, you know, start out with the, the question that you felt the most connected to out of the six. And it was really interesting because the first question you picked was number three. Mm -hmm. And then you went to number four. And then you went to number five. And then you went to number one, number two, and number six. <laughs> <laughs> what was really cool about watching it was because I know um, the reason I approached it that way rather than go to question one, two, three, four, five, six, is because I know sometimes it's hard, like you get stuck. Like, what if you're not connected to question number one and number two? It feels like it's a drudgery, which is really interesting because question number one and question number two were the last questions that you answered. And so I felt that by breaking it up to which ones do you feel the most connected to, you know, your energy was high. And so you started off with high energy and writing about the questions you felt most connected to. And then after you got that all the way, it was like, okay, well, you're, you're, you know, you're on a good flow, you're going, and why not just keep going? And then by the time you got to the very last question, number six, you're like, hmm, okay, I think I'm stuck. I might have to come back to this. But by that point, you had already written number six, and you had your first rough draft. And it was like, awesome, in less than an hour, you know, you had this whole rough draft. So it was really, really powerful and really cool to watch, Robin. Um, is there any, any insight that you gained that you'd like to share about this? Yeah, I just really appreciated uh, the gentle way that you approached uh, asking me to answer the question. You said, you know, like, which, which question really speaks to you right now? And then I'd finish it, and I was kind of waiting to be like, okay, well, I guess I'll come back to this later. And then you're like, well, now, which other, like, what question now speaks to you? Like, you're just very gentle and nice, and it made me, like, want to, like, oh, okay. And, and, you, and giving me choice. Like, okay, so being gentle and not, like, Okay, you really need to do this, Robin. I need you to get one, two, three, four. You know, it was gentle. It was, uh, and then I had choice on which one I felt most comfortable with working on because you know these are these are once again it's it's personal questions. It's emotional. It's like highly charged for me. Um, I also I haven't thought about this in a long time because when I was really sick was back in high school community college and that was a while ago so I just really appreciate the approach um, and also while I was typing in the bullet points you were there but you sat back 
and like if I needed you, I could ask you a question. But for the most part, you were you were giving me the space to like work it out and not critiquing, which is also I'm highly sensitive to that. So I mean, I'm aware of that. But um, when you did come in to give me feedback, it was supportive feedback, and I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I think. That's a very important point. I think a lot of times when we're giving feedback, we're used to it being uh, praise or negative, and sometimes we have a hard time seeing constructive feedback. And so my goal for this was for you to have a rough draft written out, because once you get it all out on paper, or in this case digital format, in a Word document, then it's easier to go back and to revise it. And so as a coach, it's like, okay, you wrote it, you know what you meant. But now me coming out, coming in and reading it, I might not know because you have may have been in an emotionally charged state that, you know, the words came out, but maybe it wasn't as eloquently or as refined, or maybe someone from the outside wouldn't know exactly what you were saying. So it's mm -hmm. best for you to get it all out you know, written out first, and then for me to come back and say, okay, well, what did you mean by this? Like, can you clarify, or, you know, what is that? What kind of drug is that? You know, when you're talking about the different kinds of drugs you were on, and trying different things, you know, it, it gives me a perspective, because now I feel like, okay, I have individual questions I can ask you, or individual things I can point out, and that'll help you refine it, so it's not me doing it, it's me saying, well, you know, Robin, that doesn't quite make sense. Or, you know, what about this? Or, I'm reading it, and this is how I'm interpreting it. Is that what you really meant? And so now it comes a conversation. Rather than me telling you what to do, it's me giving you feedback, or you telling me, you know what, Crystal, well, I really didn't mean it like that. Maybe I should say it like this. And then you can automatically go back in and start typing. And another thing that I thought was really, really interesting to observe was, on some of the questions, you answered in bullet points. You may have had four or five bullet points. In others of them, you started writing in complete sentences, like a bullet point, complete sentence, bullet point, another complete sentence. And then on some of the questions, you just started writing it like an essay. It was like a paragraph. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, obviously I can tell which one she feels really connected to because some of them, it just flowed really well. It was like, oh, I've thought about this before. I can answer this. This is easy. No problem. Like, da 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 type away. For some of them, they're like, man, I don't know. Like, what do I say? Like, I don't know. I'm going to say something about, <laughs> you know, being grouchy when I'm in pain and hurt, being short with loved ones. Mm -hmm. So it's just really interesting to see how different parts of your essay need different amounts of attention in terms of revising it. And so, you know, it was really cool to watch because now I know which portions of the essay to focus on in order to, you know, which parts to give you more feedback and where to start and where, uh, where to go because the ones that you put the least amount of information are the ones where I know I'm going to need to ask the most questions to help draw out more information to help communicate or complete the sentence and answer the question fully. Versus the other ones, I'm like, okay, she's got that. She knows what she wants to say. She already said it. You know, now we'll just check it for grammar and punctuation to make sure it flows smoothly. So with that being said, you did an awesome job, Robin. I'm so proud of you. Nice. And uh, that completes our hangout for tonight. So do you have any other comments you'd like to make in closing? No, thanks for sitting with me through my process. You're welcome. It's so nice to not have to go through it alone. That's what coaches are for. <laughs> So with that, uh, thank you for watching, everybody, and we will look forward to talking to you soon and seeing you next week.